everybody, I'm Michael from Retrospect, and welcome to Spooky Season. A few of us celebrated recently by watching the 1988 Tim Burton classic Beetlejuice, starring Tim Burton's Batman as Christopher Nolan's Joker, the old guy from 30 Rock looking like the young guy from Spin City, a postmodern version of the mom from Home Alone, and the goth version of the mom from Stranger Things. This movie's great for the Halloween season, or just this year in general. As soon as we get settled, we'll build you a dark room in the basement, okay? My whole life is a dark room. So, being a movie from our childhood, there's a lot to love about Beetlejuice. But one thing that really stood out to us now is the scene where Winona Ryder is using a Sun 660 Polaroid camera to capture proof that there really are ghosts in this house. And as we're watching the scene, we realize this camera just doesn't behave at all like your average Polaroid camera behaves. Now, there could be a lot of reasons for this. You mix a little bit of special effects with the little magic from the prop department, and you have a scene that tells the story. This scene wasn't filmed to pander to the Polaroid enthusiasts in the audience, but it got us wondering, could we make a camera that does this? When we go back to look at the tape, we primarily see two things happening. One, the camera is firing very, very quickly. And two, it's shooting the exposed frames way clear of the camera. Let's start with the rapid fire thing first. Polaroid 600 cameras are dependent on the flash to make successful exposure. However, the flash is reliant on these pretty old school capacitors to generate the power backup in between each cycle. If you go and look at the clip, you can see that their flash isn't always firing correctly either. It doesn't seem to be directly related to the picture being taken. Now, in reality, you can shoot without the flash using the flash override trigger. But even by doing that with an actual camera, you're still never going to get as quick of shots as they're getting in the scene. So if we throw out the idea of using the flash altogether, is there still a way to hack the camera to make it shoot faster? For that, I went to talk to Brian, our head of repairs. There's a solenoid in the 600 camera that controls the opening and closing of the shutter blades. When one takes a photograph, the solenoid energizes and allows the shutter latch to disconnect from the walking beam. The solenoid then de-energizes to allow the shutter blades to open up the spring tension. Once the exposure is deemed to be complete, the solenoid will re-energize and pull the shutter blades shut, relatching them closed and ready for the next cycle. To make the camera continuously cycle, one increases the gap between the end of the solenoid plunger and a screw at the end of the solenoid. The blades can no longer close appropriately at the end of the cycle, which causes the camera to think that it needs to keep cycling in order to close the blades. So, we had Brian do all that. And while he was in there, he threw in this thing called the super motor. Apparently it was a prototype of like a cranked up 600 motor that he had laying around. And we kind of figured, what could it hurt? So, theoretically we have this speed thing solved. But what about this whole picture launching thing? When you really think about it, it would be kind of awkward if every time you took a picture with a Polaroid camera, it ejected your film completely from the camera. A key design aspect of every Polaroid camera since the SX-70 has been that the camera holds on to your recently ejected frame until you physically remove it. So what we need to do is figure out a way to override an intrinsic part of the camera's design. In a Polaroid 600 camera, there's two little clips in the roller assembly that grab each frame holding the picture there until you're ready to remove it. The thought is, if these clips are removed, the picture should exit the camera freely and should eject as far as the motor is able to push it. It's worth mentioning that there's also normally a frog tongue or a film shield that comes out with the exposed picture. What the film shield does is protect your image while it's in those first early stages of development. Now, in the Beetlejuice clip, the film shield doesn't appear to be there at all. So we ripped ours out too. And it really shouldn't matter much, because we'll be using pre-exposed film to test our camera with. So, we have our test camera all ready to go. Let's give this thing a shot. Right out of the gate, that was pretty good. We got the quick ejection, and it was shooting the frames clear of the camera. It wasn't hanging on at all. But it didn't have that kind of acrobatic flair that they had in the Beetlejuice clip. Maybe they were using a fan, or maybe they were using a vacuum cleaner, or a string. 
I don't know. I think there's something we could probably try to maybe perk it up a little bit. the greatest with special effects. But I think it proved that we pretty much got there. This has been a lot of fun for us, but at the end of the day, I think the big question is, can this camera get modified like this and actually take pictures? And the unfortunate answer is no. See, if we go back to what Brian said initially about how he was able to make the camera cycle so quickly, it also explains why the camera will never make a true image. By keeping the shutter stuck open, the camera is tricked into cycling continuously, but never fully. It was a fun experiment, but not one with this super practical application. Even amongst some of us here, we had quite the debate on how this might have actually worked when they made this movie. And that's what we're interested to hear from you. If you have any theories, from the supernatural to the totally obvious, let us know in the comments. And until then, enjoy the Halloween season. Maybe go watch a movie. A movie like Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice.